Now that we've learned about the Fourier coefficients and their representation for different signals here, we can look at the weighted summation of a cosine and a sine wave up in a textbook, in a math textbook, and we can find this equation here, which looks very much like a single contribution at the ith harmonic, so at the 10th or at the 13th harmonic, for example. And that one would also transfer into a different equation on the right-hand side. We could represent the weighted cosine at this harmonic plus the weighted sine wave at this harmonics by two different coefficients. And in that case, that would be the amplitude AI with an uppercase A and a phase phi of a cosine a soil waveform phi i for the nth harmonic of a wave. Now, if we apply that to our original Fourier series for all n harmonics here, then we can rewrite all of the nth harmonics like a cosine soidal waveform with the original information of the Fourier coefficients now being coded into the so-called amplitude and the phase of a cosinusoidal waveform. We still have the offset A0 being outside of the summation and that gives at the end, summing up all these signals, gives our original signal back again. The amplitudes An can be calculated from the Fourier coefficients, the lowercase an by squaring it and adding it up with the squared version of the, of the BN Fourier coefficients and at the end taking the square root of the result. The phases at the nth harmonic are calculated by the arcus tangents of the BN coefficient divided by the AN coefficient and invert the result before taking the arcus tangents. The amplitudes, all of them together, are also called the amplitude spectrum, and all of the phases together, all of the phases phi, are called the phase spectrum. Now we can use these amplitudes to represent the signal graphically across the frequency. So plotting the frequency on the x-axis, zero would be the lowest, which is our DC value. So up here, we get actually our original offset, our original mean value, our original DC value. For the first harmonic, we get first harmonic or also called fundamental. We get a contribution and we can plot this way here. And then some people call this one the second harmonic. Some people call that the first harmonic would be contributing to the overall signal with this amount of amplitude and so on and so on. The third harmonic or second harmonic, depending on whom you ask, would be contributing with that amount of amplitude. And you do that for all of the harmonics, theoretically all the way up to infinity. Simultaneously, the fundamental frequency has a phase in this phase spectrum and it has a phase value at all of its harmonics which you could plot like this. Now this is an arbitrary signal that is just randomly plotted here but a few things are nevertheless very typically seen in electronics. First of all it's very common that the odd harmonics are dominating, so that is the fundamental, and then the, let's call it the third harmonic, the fifth harmonic, and so on. The fifth harmonic is not plotted here, but they would be higher than the in between the odd harmonics, the second, the fourth, and the sixth, and so on. And another typical thing is that the phase spectrum would be positive for one of the signals, and be negative for the next one, and then again being positive for all the odds, 
and being negative for all the evens or vice versa. Very often when plotting the spectrum you would plot the x-axis, that means the frequency axis, in a logarithmic manner for both the amplitude spectrum and the phase spectrum. On the y-axis for the amplitude you often lose a logarithmic scale by just converting all the resulting numbers that you get for the spectrum into decibels whereas the y-axis of the phases typically stays linear.